Hello and welcome back. I just want to talk about paper two for computer science for the new specification 0478. And this is a specimen paper that is available on the Cambridge website. The specification has changed. Everybody now sits two papers, which they did before, but the timings and the weightings have changed. Paper one and paper two are both an hour and 45 minutes. Obviously, we've got the theory paper, paper one, and then we've got the programming paper, paper two. Um, weighting 50% for both and the total marks is 75 for both. Topics 1 to 6 are covered in paper 1 and topics 7 to 10 are covered in paper 2. Neither paper you can use a calculator with, which is a little bit tricky for the binary stuff in here and the hexadecimal and, um, and maybe for some of the things in here as well. This is what we will sit. There it is, examinations from 2023, an hour and 45 minutes. This is paper 2, algorithms, logic and programming. 75 marks okay please use a blue or black pen and an hp pencil 75 mark so 60 60 of the marks are from the first part of the paper another 15 uh, marks are from a scenario an unseen scenario question unlike before when you used to get pre-release you now you don't you just get an un unseen scenario question and it's quite long you should spend about 30 minutes on it the rest are made up of a01 a02 and a03 and um, of course this paper ranges from A star to G, but let's have a look. AO of course stands for Assessment Objectives. AO1, Demonstrate Knowledge and Understanding of the Principles and Concepts of Computer Science the Theory. Apply Knowledge and Understanding of the Principles of Concepts of Computer Science to a given context, including the analysis and design of computational or programming problems. Um, AO3, Provide Solutions to Problems by Evaluating Computer Systems, Making Reasoned Judgments, Presenting Conclusions. AO1 is predominantly um, theory. So 60% of the paper, a little bit of AO2 and AO3, and AO2, the problem solving bit, obviously features a lot heavier in paper two. So we will make a start. Question one, here's a question. We've got to sort of marry these up. Um, and I've given you some examples down here. Four pseudocode descriptions and five pseudocode statements are shown. Draw a line to link each pseudocode description to the most appropriate pseudocode statement. Some pseudocode statements will not be used. Okay, so we can see here a loop that will always iterate or loop round at least once. A loop that will always go round once. Repeat until. Okay, it'll always go round once. Repeat, print hello until x is greater than 10. Or x is greater than 1 in this case. A conditional statement to deal with many possible outcomes. Well, this would be a case statement, case of otherwise end case, such as days of the week. And then we've got a loop that will always iterate a set number of times. Four, two, and next. Here we go. For i equals one to ten. Print i next. Okay. So from one to ten, a range of numbers. And then finally, a conditional statement with different outcomes for true or false. We're going to do if, then, else, and if. It's a conditional statement. If this does this, if x is greater than y, then do this. Yeah, print x is greater than y. Else, do this. If, then, a conditional statement. That's what we've got there, okay? With true or false outcomes. And I've put in the while loop there, which isn't, doesn't exist, but while, do, end while. While x is less than 100, do x equals x times 2. Okay, so there's a little example of a while loop in pseudocode. So that's your four marks for the first question. Should be easy enough if you know pseudocode. Okay, using a single loop, write an algorithm in pseudocode to output 50 names that have been stored in an array name. Okay, so again, it's a, it's a for i in range loop. So for i equals, obviously, 0 to 49. Um, consider the first value as being 0. You could have put 1 to 50, I don't think it matters. Um, print name um, for i, so all the names that are stored in the, um, in the array and next so keep looping around looping around looping around and printing the 50 names out the loop variable i is used to index in the names um, names array okay the printout um, and, and print out each name in turn the loop starts at zero and ends at 49 to ensure that all 50 names are printed you can replace the print statement with output if you want if you're doing pr depending on which book you're reading you could either use print or you could use the word output now then, I've got a bit overboard with this because it's only two marks per each one, but I've tried to give an example because it does say in here, give an example of validation and verification. So validation checks 
um, validation checks are used to make sure that the data you enter into a computer system is accurate and complete. They help to prevent mistakes or errors that can cause problems later on, such as incorrect calculations or incorrect data analysis. A range check is a good example. It verifies that a value falls within a specific range, e.g. a date of birth must be between 1900 and the current year. Okay, because there's not many people older than 123. Verification checks are used to make sure that the data you enter into a computer system matches the original data source or input. This, they help to catch mistakes or errors that might have been made during data entry, such as mistyping a number or misspelling a word. Double entry verification is a good example. Passwords are entered twice and the two entries are compared for accuracy. That's an example of verification. Nice easy one. Tick one box to show the named section of a program that performs a specific task. A task is done using a function. A file is generally used in a database. A process, you could argue. Uh, some people might a parameter has nothing to do with it. But yeah, a function. Okay, a satellite navigation system is an example of a computer system that is made up of subsystems. I'm going to break this down. I've underlined the bits that we need. Part of a satellite navigation system allows us to enter details uh, for a new destination or selected from a previously saved destination. So down this, this side, I've got satellite navigation system, of course, input details, new destination or saved destination. And then here, it's also going to display, basically output, the directions, the input and output, output directions um, in the form of a map display or a list display. Okay, so that's how I would do a basically a top-down, a subsystem diagram, structure diagram of this satellite navigation system. Okay, we've got four errors in this code. Yeah, an algorithm has been written in pseudocode to input some numbers. It only outputs any numbers that are greater than or equal to 100. The number 999 is not output and stops the algorithm. Okay, so while the number, so input a number, okay, while the number is not um, less than or greater than 999, do if number is greater than 100, which well is here greater than or equal to, so I think we've got something going wrong there, then output number, and if, and while loop output number. So what have I got? Well numbers obviously you've got an if number, you've got numbers and you've got number there so there's, there's something gone wrong there. There's number here, number there so th this one that says number should read number. Okay as I said before if the number is greater than 100 it should be if it's greater than or equal than. Now and you might not spot this we've got an, an input missing. Obviously we input the first number but then we've got to put another input number in here after the end if to continue inputting numbers through this loop okay and then if the number reaches 999 we end the while loop output number is not needed removed from the code it's outputting the numbers every time isn't it here okay every time we go through the loop it outputs a number so we don't need this final output number otherwise it's going to do it twice okay at the end so here we go I've rewritten it input number while the number is less than or greater than 999 do if number is greater than or equal to 100, then output the number. And if input number, okay, and then end the while loop. Yep, that should work. Okay, that's question five. Question six, re, um, write a pseudocode statement to change the corrected algorithm to output all numbers between 100 and 200 inclusive. You do not need to rewrite the whole algorithm. Well, I've just put in here, if the number is greater than or equal to 100, yeah, and the number is less than or equal to 200. If you pop that in, that would work fine. That's enough. Now for logic, we can identify from the statement, from the expression, the gates we'll need. An AND gate, an OR gate, an AND gate, and a NOT gate. These things here. Okay. Because we've got only got two sets of brackets, we've got an OR gate here. I would put the this OR gate down here. Okay. So if I do that, I'll show you. So I popped an OR gate in, okay, in here. Then I'm going to focus on this one. X equals A and B. So A and B are going into an AND gate. Or B, yeah, and not C. Okay, that would solve that problem there. Very, very easy, this one. Um, to say you've got to learn all six of the, um, of the logic gates. 
So let's bring this into a truth table. And because we've got working space, I'm going to use working space. I would have I've created D, E, and F. Okay. So whenever everything's off, um, D, so we're talking about A and B, whenever D, whenever A and B are off, D is obviously off. Um, a and B, A and B have got to be on for D to be on, as you can see down here. Okay. Um, e, well, basically it's the opposite of, um, it's going to be the opposite of when C is on. So if C is off, E is on, on, off, and it's just the opposites every time. And then finally the AND gate, sorry, then finally the the F is where is B and C, C has got to be off and B has got to be on. So we can see that there's two occasions where F would be on. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we take into account D and F and they're going into an OR gate. So whenever one of them and not the other, or both, are on, so here both are on, one's on there, uh, one's on there, so one, two, three, they would be all correct. Okay, so I've taken D and F. I recommend using working space. Um, it might take a little bit of time, but yeah, it, it enables you to check it. I'm going to stop there for this video because we've well over 10 minutes. So thank you very much indeed, and I will see you next time. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I would be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.